Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Mary Jane and this is MJ Money Matters. On this channel, I show you how I use the zero-based budgeting method to control and maintain a simplified money life. If that sounds like in content that you're interested in, I would love it if you would hit the notification bell, hit the subscribe button, and stick around for more. So, last week's tea was that I literally... I don't want to say that I walked out because I did finish the shift, but never to return. And then, of course, there was some drama with that because I was supposed to work the next morning. I was supposed to be the opener. And, of course, I didn't come because I had informed them, like, I am, in fact, done. <laughs> uh, and informed the manager on duty. Um, and so, you know, obviously, I didn't go to work. I mean, don't threaten me with a good time, right? Um, I slept in. It was wonderful, actually. And um, so I get a text. I mean, no, an email. Not a text. An email. And it's through the Hot Schedules app. And they had punished me by taking me off the schedule on Monday. I'm like, I've quit. <laughs> And if you think I'm still there, I know called no showed on Sunday, even though I already quit. But, um, but then they put me on the schedule for the rest of the week. So today is Thursday, meaning they had put me on the schedule for Wednesday, which would have been yesterday. So I think they pretty much got the point where I also did not show up on Wednesday that I, in fact, was not kidding. I don't work there anymore. <sighs> Moving forward. I took Sunday for me. I have allergies pretty bad and it was uh, it was pretty brutal for the last couple of days up here with allergies. So I took Sunday for myself. Monday I left work early um, and slept for like 16 hours. On Tuesday, uh, it was still a little rough. <coughs> <coughs> but on Monday, I started applying for jobs. So by Tuesday, I had things scheduled. And Wednesday, I had my first interview, which was yesterday. I'm not necessarily staying away from fine dining, but I am definitely looking at other forms of waiting tables. So I went to a place that does a lot of craft beers, full menu, but it was like attached to an entertainment place, but it's in Troy. So Troy is, you know, a very high money demographic so I go and I do nothing but have positive you know vibes and everything and the guy was like it was like talking to a cardboard box his big interview question to me was can you describe what an import beer is and so I asked him, I'm like, are, are you asking for different kinds of beer? Like, do you want me to talk about Guinness or that it's from Ireland or Foster's, Australia? He's like, no, 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 no. I would like the definition of import. And I'm like, uh, I started laughing. I'm like, it, it comes from another country? Like, and he was like, right, it comes from another country. I was like, oh my God, yeah, this is not going well. And then it's some point he was like can you tell me one of your weaknesses and I was like obviously laughing at stupid questions <laughs> so, can guarantee that did not go well but that's fine because it's like dude you really should know that's a really dumb interview question especially if you look at my resume give me a break also too it's just like the definition of import in general like what does it mean to that something is imported like oh my goodness I can't even so the the night went on and my phone rang and I didn't recognize the phone number, but I did see it was from one of the cities I had applied in. So I didn't answer it. It's so rare for me to answer my phone if I don't know who you are. But I was like, mm, it might be one of these jobs. And it was. And it's a very busy place. It's like fast paced and all this fun stuff. And they have all kinds of different things going on. And it's just, it's like a massive, like giant plex of things um, on top of like tons of craft beers and just tons of things on tap and full bars but like multiple bars and all kinds of things going on so plus league play on different sports stuff and all kinds of different variety something for everybody and it's really close to a college so I'm talking to him on the phone like a phone interview and he's like well this is not really fine dining and I'm like look I I don't mind I don't I don't even mind a change honestly 
And so he told me about the way that they have their pay structured. And what they do is everybody puts into the pool and they tip pool. And I've never worked in a tip pool before, but I'm definitely not against it. They have um, a minimum hourly that you will make, which is very decent. And honestly, if I got that hourly minimum, which it sounds like you get every day that you work, I would make more money at this place than I do in fine dining on slow nights. Um, would I make as much as I make in fine dining on busy nights? Probably not. But the average out sounds like it would be pretty comparable. Plus, there, he didn't talk about any tip out at all. I can't imagine that there's any server assistance in that kind of a situation. I mean, you may need to tip out hostess or bar. I would say that that's a maybe. But I think that that goes into consideration because he said he does the whole report thing. Um, he takes care of all of that. And then you get a prepaid card and the money is uploaded to the card like before the sun comes up tomorrow. So it would be back to being paid nightly. And let me tell you, I was just like, I will meet you anytime, any day. The fact that I could find something and go back to something where I could get paid daily is huge. And it also helps me so much when getting back on track. Because the fact that I kept having to borrow from my previously stuffed envelopes to pay to go to work and wait and wait and wait for these checks. And then they wouldn't clear. And then I'm waiting more and more days, but I'm still having to pony up cash. And then they took away our cash and we had to pay the cash into the house. It was when he was like, you don't have a job here anymore if you don't take that table. I was like, you know what? That sounds like a good idea. Um, there's got to be something out there better. And I can't argue with the money that I was making, but it was definitely at the lower end of fine dining income. You know, I have made better for sure. And I'm just like, if I'm going to trade my time for money, because the whole point of all of this is that I'm trying to build a business that will become semi-passive income so that I can step away, do early retirement, fire, whatever it is you want to call it. Um, I don't consider myself retiring since it is like semi-passive and I still have stuff to do and I would still work in philanthropic areas and still volunteer and things that are important to me. I would still fill my time. Um, I am actively working towards moving away from trading dollars for hours and if I can do that in a less prestigious, I say with finger quotes, place, that's fine. It doesn't bother me. I'm not bougie about it. I'm really not. It's kind of weird to me when the people who work at restaurants are very bougie about it because it's like, you're the help. I don't mean to be rude about that because I'm the help too, but I don't know. It's like, um, I, I don't, I don't think that's anything to be super, you know, snotty about, but that's just me. I did. Um, so yes, I have this job interview coming up Saturday morning. He wants me up there at nine in the morning, whatever. Sure. I'll do it. Um, I also picked up a catering gig in uh gross point also high demographic, you know, money wage area. And so I have a catering gig that night. I didn't find me for Sunday and that's okay. I can take a Sunday. Like I work doing other things, you know, but I'm all caught up in my grading. I'm all caught up in my grade book. There's like, I'm all caught up in my emails. Everything's good at my teaching job. But also too, it is sometimes tiring having multiple jobs, but obviously having multiple incomes gave me that freedom to just walk. It really did. Um, without fear of, oh my God, am I going to be able to pay more mortgage? And I did in fact pay more mortgage already. I pay it early. I know I've talked about this before. I'm like, I try to pay things early, early. So I have no surprises. Everything's taken care of because I have been in that spot where things are not. I know that stress and I'm trying to get away from it. I'm proud of me for doing this. And here we go. So my estimate had been, I'll tell you, so they owe me 700 bucks. My estimate for my other job is 850. So my, I should have been somewhere in the neighborhood of 1550 for the week. 
but that's a big no. That was my choice. Nope. So it's going to be $8.50. I cannot say when I will get paid from the restaurant. I know that he will stretch it out as long as he can because that's what he did to other people. If that's what they'll do to someone else, they'll do it to you. So I imagine that it's on a slow boat from China, basically. And then <laughs> it will take weeks, right? So I read that re weeks, perhaps. Weeks, perhaps. So there is some money coming to me at some point. I can't, you know, I mean, it's, I will get it eventually, but I can't put this into a budget because I just don't know when I will cut, I will get it. So that's okay. I will work with this. Estimate 850. This is not the end of the world. I can do it. And, you know, I just had a whole summer, whole lean girl summer of the one job. So it's not like I haven't done it before. <sighs> okay. So. For the mortgage, I'm going to set aside $150 for next month. I already paid October, um, but I never, ever, ever want to get behind. That is my number one first thing I pay every week. Gas. I'm going to give myself $80. Um, my commute's been pretty okay in the morning. I put aside an extra $25 for more gas, I said, last week. There are this this week that I'm working and um, I haven't needed it, so I'm gonna put myself fifty. I mean eighty dollars, and then you know if I if I have a little bit left over, then you know maybe I can treat myself and go somewhere for lunch or something. The IOU one hundred and fifty. So in parentheses is one hundred dollars. That's all I have left. I'm paying her one hundred and fifty. I have 100 left and that debt is gone forever. Lawn love. I'm really happy about that too. Believe me. Uh, $70. I pay him 50 for the service and I always tip him 20. Um, very nice man. And he's, he's super sweet to me. So put that aside. Um, sometimes I pay him cash. Like during the summer I was paying him cash, but since I'm at school, I've been cash apping him. Um, but, you know, 70 bucks. The triple A renewal. I know I put this aside last week. I, I don't know how I didn't pay it. I think, honestly, I spent it at Wendy's during lunch. I think that's what happened. I did a little bit too many biggie bags. All right. Um, <laughs> and I did pack my lunch a couple of times, but I did find myself at Wendy's. I found myself at Wendy's today. Whatever. You know, treat yourself every once in a while. I've had a stressful week. <laughs> So it's also spirit week at school. So I've been having to like come up with weird costumes and, you know, wear neon. And today is pajama day. Just, I'm like, what? I don't have any of that. Like I moved here in a car, you know? And I didn't, I don't want to go buy things for that I'm never going to wear again. I, I'm just, I don't know. <laughs> it happens. American water, $10 towards that. And that is like a bit of an insurance, you know, in case there is a problem from my water main to the city line. And that sounds a little like, really, what are the odds of that? But it happened to me in Fort Worth. If you've ever seen that episode, I talk about it where I'm driving up the road like, oh, damn, that poor person. They're going to have a big bill. And it was me. Oh, yes. Cigna is also an insurance, a cancer insurance since it runs in my family. $30. Groceries and pets. When I say pets, I mean like their food and my food and I just buy it all at one time. So I'm just combining it, not doing separate envelopes, being all crazy like that. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but $80 for that. And I don't normally, like you'll notice, I don't think I've ever put groceries in my budget before. And that's because as a server, I would always get these cash tips here and there and then I would use that at the grocery store. But because I'm not waiting tables this week, I gotta put it in. <coughs> Excuse my allergies. Home insurance. This is not close to due, but I am paying it early because next week's budget is a lot. It's a lot that needs to be due that week. So since I have some wiggle room here, I'm just gonna go ahead and prepay that. So it's $200. Um, obviously, I mean, I have a mortgage, so I, I have to keep current on my home insurance. Even if I didn't have a mortgage, 
I need to keep current, current on my home insurance, you know, it's always in case something happens. There's always things. There's always house fires and weird people running into your living room with cars. And I mean, hurricanes, there's a freaking hurricane today. You know, I mean, it's just, I'm not the biggest proponent of the insurance world. I have a friend, a very good friend who works in insurance and I know it's, it's very scammy in a lot of ways, but it is really important for me being a homeowner and I just, I have to bite the bullet every month and do it. And I just do it. So for Turo, I'm putting aside $45 because that's all that's left in my budget. And it is what it is there. Um, that is something that I'm obviously like 100% focused on. And it sucks that I can't put that much into it. But when I thought I was making this money for these bills, I was like, oh my God, I'm going to have so much money to put aside for Turo. And, you know, whatever. Maybe. I mean, we'll see what happens, but maybe this money can go to Turo when I get it. Something to shoot for, and we'll see what happens later on in the month as I attempt to pay my bills with one salary until I, um, you know, do these little side hustles. And, you know, it's like when you get paid. So I'm doing the side hustle on Saturday, but I don't get paid till the following Friday. But, you know, you got to pay bills before then. And so it's, can I make that happen? I don't know. We'll see, but it's a good, it's a good goal to reach, to attempt to reach. All right. So to recap, let me get my uh, trusty little calculator out. There it is. So 150 plus 80 plus 150 plus 70 plus 35 plus 10 plus 30 plus 80 plus 200 plus 45 is exactly $450. So um, hopefully I get that 700 at some point soon, but I can't count on it. It is what it is. I'm pretty, I'm very torn because I liked the guy, um, but you also can't threaten not to pay your servers. It's illegal. And, you know, when I was personally insulted as to, you know, I didn't get the big section because I didn't earn it, but can I go out there, you know, for free and help them? It's like, man, <laughs> that's a big ask. That's a big ask. So I hope honestly that I do get the job at the big Cineplex place. Um, and I am in this tip pool situation because say that there's a guy and he just thinks Sally is so hot and he's just tipping Sally like crazy. And then I've got this other tables of like kind of meh people or whatever. You know, it will all balance out. So people stiffing me, people like leaving me six cents, like on Saturday night, all of that will balance itself out when you share. Sharing is caring. I really, I'm interested to try it. I hope he hires me. I don't know. We'll see. I guess I'll update you about that sooner than later. And again, it is Thursday. <laughs> what day is it? It's Thursday. So I get paid tomorrow. Um, I tend to get paid. I want to say it's like between three and four in the morning is when the direct deposit goes through. And so that's another thing that, I mean, the fact that this money just automatically goes into this card and I'm sure the card will screw you over somehow. Like, oh, they get money out of it. It's going to charge you a dollar I mean, whatever. There's always some way that they screw you. But the fact that I don't have to wait for these checks and then wait for them to clear and all that bullshit is like, I would pay a dollar. It's fine. Um... But the, the amazing thing about, you know, the teaching job is I do get direct deposit. Um, so during the summer, when I was just doing being a server, I was getting those insane fees from the bank because my bank charges me a maintenance fee if I'm not getting direct deposit. And so, like, what a pain. I had even thought about just going out and, like, door dashing a couple of times a week just so that I could get the money to, like put into my account so that I could avoid the fee but I was so busy like working on my house and doing house things that when I had the time I was like I just I can't be bothered to do that not to mention the wear and tear in your car really just got to me I just really don't do DoorDash very much anymore if at all I haven't done it at all in probably over a year um, but I am looking forward to the catering gig. I hope they like me. It's very close to my house. And it's an old church. 
that they've renovated to make it into an art gallery. So it sounds pretty interesting. I hope everyone has a great weekend. Um, if you're in the East Coast way, um, stay safe. And I hope everybody is all right from that hurricane. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.